Thank you for joining another edition of Focus on Alternatives, hosted by ADISA, the Alternative and Direct Investment and Securities Association. I'm Damon Elder, publisher of the DIYer, and today I'm joined by Bill Bosco, head of capital markets for manufactured housing properties. So, Bill, obviously, we're going to talk about manufactured housing. So, why don't we start with the basics? You know, what exactly is manufactured housing? You know, so many of us think of, you know, trailer parks or whatever, but I think it's a little bit more complex than the stereotype. So why don't you kind of fill us in a little bit? Sure. Well, manufactured housing is a term that's used for houses that are built in a factory setting, Damon. And in a factory setting, you have the advantages of production line assembly in terms of speed, quality, and also cost efficiency. So once the homes are assembled in that factory setting, they're transported to a predetermined site. It could be an individual home site, or it could be a site that's uh, located within a manufactured housing community. So, Bill, we're talking about manufactured housing. What exactly is the scope and the scale? You know, is this a super large industry in this country? I mean, how people... How many people actually live in these homes? You know, fill us in. Sure. Uh, A lot of people are surprised, Damon, at the size of of the manufactured housing segment of the housing industry. Uh, Here are some statistics. 22 million Americans live in a manufactured home. Uh, In some states, between 15 all the way up to 20% of all residents will live in a manufactured home. There are approximately 8.5 million manufactured houses in the country. And then finally, in terms of single-family home starts on an annual basis, they account for 9% of all housing single-family home starts. Uh, Last year, as an example, over 105,000 manufactured homes were built. What attracts folks to live in these homes rather than traditional single-family housing or you know, even apartment living. Why why manufactured housing? Sure. Well, there are really three reasons. Uh, Number one is affordability. Uh, When I say affordability, for for families that are living on a limited budget, uh, manufactured homes uh, are very, very reasonable relative to multifamily uh, houses or or apartments of similar quality. So that's number one. Number two is attainability, in that manufactured housing represents really the first point of entry for families that are interested in buying a home. And then third is desirability, and it's been shown in terms of uh, studies that over 90% of all people that live in a manufactured home are very satisfied with the living environment, and here's why. Number one, they don't have to share walls with other families. It is its own standalone house. Uh, Because of that, they're able to park their car right outside the door. The kids are able to play right outside the door as well, and they have a little bit of land that they can work with. Okay, so Bill, so what's the overall market really look like? manufactured housing wise? I mean, are there massive companies that own these? Are they own, owned all by small individual entrepreneurs? What are we looking at from a market perspective? Well, really it's a little bit of both, Damon, in that the, the manufactured housing market is very fragmented. So you'll have examples such as Berkshire Hathaway, Sam Zell, that'll be very involved in the industry. Uh, but just the same, you'll have a multiple of single uh, small entities, mom and pop operations that are also involved in the industry, either in terms of community ownership or for that matter, very small manufacturers of manufactured homes. So Bill, why should investors be interested in manufactured housing? Obviously there's a lot of stereotypes out there that we all think of. Um, I think you've dispelled some of those a bit today, but from an investor's perspective, Why should I be investing in manufactured housing? Sure. Well, again, I'll give you three good reasons, Damon. Number one is housing overall is a non-discretionary asset. All of us need a place to live. And when you take a look, and it's a well-known fact that there's a a acute housing shortage in the country nowadays, Uh, manufactured housing is in very, very high demand because, in part, that housing shortage is extremely uh, uh, present for those that are on a limited income. Second is in terms of the financial metrics that are uh, really fundamental in terms of manufactured housing. Number one is in terms of general occupancy, average occupancy, and this is across the country, occupancy can tend up toward 90%. And that generates stable cash flows uh, through all environments. Uh, When you take a look at how manufactured housing fared through difficult market environments such as past recessions, or for that matter, even recently with the pandemic, occupancy stayed steady at about 90%. Also, in terms of expense margins, uh, as far as operation of manufactured housing communities, they can trend to be uh, above 30%. So that's also very, very attractive. Uh, The third factor is when you take a look at the manufactured housing segment 
of the housing industry is that rents really have not kept up with the rest of the housing industry. And when I say rents, rents within manufactured housing. So there's an opportunity as housing communities are acquired, as they're improved, uh, to make those rents become uh, more on parallel with the other housing segments. Why haven't rents maintained, you know, market levels? Well, I think it's really a, a testament to the fact that, as I mentioned earlier, the industry is very fragmented. And with that, you have inefficiencies inherent in the industry. And you'll have situations where if you have mom and pop operators that have owned a housing community, they just almost have been lazy over their term of ownership and they haven't kept pace in terms of improving the community, but also revaluing and increasing rents uh, for those improvements. So how would an investor, what's an individual investor, of course, how would they allocate into manufactured housing? I mean, what's the marketplace look like for an investor? Sure. Well, a lot of uh, investors are taking a look at the alternative investment space for doing just that. Uh, there are a lot of uh, opportunities that either generate income, growth in income, or just pure growth uh, with alternative investment sponsors that allow investors to participate in the industry. So, Bill, if you're an individual investor and you're interested in allocating some of your investment dollars into manufactured housing, you know, what are the options? What, what's the marketplace look like for an individual? Mm -hmm. Well, there are a few options, Damon, and, there, and the options are actually starting to, to increase, uh, which is great. Uh, number one, there are various REITs that are available to invest in for investors. Uh, number two, uh, there are Reg A offerings and Reg D offerings. There are also a uh, third, uh, 1031 or DST exchange offerings that are available. So the ability to invest and participate in this segment of the housing market really covers a wide range. So, Bill, tell me a little bit about the industry from a growth perspective and a demand perspective. I mean, how is the industry changing? Has it changed recently? You know, wh what's it really look like from a big picture perspective? Sure. Well, first of all, I think it's safe to say that the housing industry, specifically the manufactured housing industry, has really evolved and evolved for the better over the last couple of decades. Uh, with that, there's also the increase in demand, and for that matter, a really constant supply of manufactured housing. As we discussed earlier, Damon, there's an extreme housing shortage in the country, so manufactured housing can play an integral role in terms of housing for people that are on a limited budget. Uh, that's one thing. The second thing is when you take a look at the demand uh, for manufactured housing, uh, we think it's only going to increase. Uh, as people uh, take a look at, at really the, the value that manufactured housing presents, the attainability. One statistic that I didn't mention earlier is the square, the, the price per square foot of building a, a single family house is about, on average, $144. With manufactured housing, it's $73 per square foot, so almost just 50%. And that allows Again, families that are interested in, in having a first-time purchase of a house to participate. So, Bill, it sounds like manufactured housing can really play a key role in addressing, you know, this terrible nationwide housing shortage that we're seeing. You're right, Damon. I, it's first of all, manufactured housing has evolved to better serve the needs of, of families that uh, are looking for an alternative, uh, an attainable alternative for their housing needs. Number one. Number two, the demand uh, because of the housing shortage is so acute uh, with the, the low-income families, uh, the manufactured housing industry really re represents a great solution to uh, a, a huge problem within the country. And also, I think it's important to note from an investor standpoint, uh, the ability and opportunity to increase cash flows with that high occupancy that I referenced earlier, and also with the opportunity to increase rents as properties are acquired and approved, really uh, makes the industry very, very attractive. Well, Bill, thank you for sharing your insights on manufactured housing today. Greatly appreciate it. And thank you for joining us. For more information about manufactured housing and a whole host of other alternative asset classes, please visit www.adisa.org. Or, of course, you can always visit thediwire.com. Thanks so much.